we are going to see how VPC peering connection works. So I'm going to show you that with example of two VPCs. So like let's uh, explain the architecture and then we'll go to hands-on lab. So let me just start with explaining new architecture, right? So one is VPC one and then we'll have two subnet, one private subnet and public subnet and one EC2 instance in each. And similarly, we'll have second VPC, VPC two with same structure, one public subnet, private subnet, one EC2 in each. Then we'll have internet gateway so that public subnet can talk to internet through IGW. Similarly, in VPC2, public subnet can talk to internet through internet gateway or IGW. Right? So this is infrastructure what we need, basic infra infrastructure. And this I already created. And if you want to see how to create it, I would refer you to my earlier tutorial where we explain NAT gateway, exact same VPC was created at that time as well. So I just don't want to waste your time on this. So I have already created this infrastructure and now the purpose of this video to run you through steps needed for VPC peering connection and we'll start from there, right? So once assuming that we have this infrastructure or you know how to create this infrastructure, we will go ahead and create peering connection, right? So peering connection will be created in VPC one and then like that will be a requester and acceptor will be VPC two. And just mind like VPC one and VPC two can be in different account those can be in different region doesn't matter we can even uh, have the peering done across those vpcs but for simplicity i have this both the vpc in my account and in same region but just be aware that you can do it across accounts and across regions so this is what we are going to do setting up peering connection and then we will already will have a route table which is associated with private subnet same for both the vpcs and what we are going to do is if you see here there is a route I'm showing, right? So we will create one route which is going to this particular second VPC through PCX or uh, peering connection. Same for both. And now I have populated, if you see top left corner, the IP address is what I'm going to use 10.0.0.0/16 and 192.10.0.0/16 for VPC2. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So let's jump into management console and see this uh, happening. So I logged into management console and I quickly sh will show you the infrastructure what we built. So let me go to VPC first. Yeah, so these are the two VPCs, demo 01 or uh, demo 1 and demo 2 VPCs. Similarly, we have two subnets in each VPC. You can see it here, uh, like private and public subnet in both. And route table are attached to each of the subnet. So we have four subnet, two private and two public and route tables are separate for each of those. And apart from that, we have a subnet uh, route table I just explained and then two instances. Let me just show you uh, EC2 instances what are created and there are two in public subnets and two are in private subnets. If you see instances, these are four total four like one is in uh, demo one VPC, it's private uh, private instance, then demo one VPC public, same for demo two VPC. So the same exactly same what I explained in the architecture you can see it here okay so with this we have sorry we have all the infrastructure needed so now I'll create VPC appearing uh, connection so before that I just want to show you that like uh, uh, I'm connecting to public subnet for example demo one EC2 public subnet and from there I will SSH into the private one you just connect here okay so yeah, so this is into uh, public subnet of VPC one, and I have a you know, mykey.pem which is used for uh, bringing up or uh, invoking EC2 into prior, which is there in private subnet. So I want to connect using this key, right? So let me just take private IP of the first EC2. Okay, so this is in 10.0 right uh, range. So this is a private IP. So let me just connect. dot pem is to okay so you are connected with private instance in vpc1 so if i go to ip address for this demo 2 and just let's see like whether you can ping it we haven't done anything so i'm not expecting it to successfully ping just want to show you that that this connectivity is not there right so yeah, so this is a connection I already created for private instance in VPC one. Similarly, I will just create the like connection 
for private instance in VPC2. So first connect to the public in public instance in VPC2. Then I'll just SSH into private instance. Demo to private. So it is in 192 range, right? Like uh, and that is expected. Okay, so here also I have kept key. So let me just connect using the same key. My key dot pem. Then you see to user at the rate and this IP address, which is private instance. And you can just uh, like pay attention to this, right? Like the permissions on the key is 400. So chmod 400 and key that's already done. Otherwise, it will not allow you to connect. If it is too open, for example, if you have 777 on this particular key, it will not allow you to connect. Okay, so we are connected to both the uh, private instances. So this is uh, VPC2, which is demo2, and this is VPC1, which is demo1. Okay. So now, okay. So I just stopped it. Now with this, right? I'll just proceed with creating uh, peering connection, and this is what we are like uh, doing it now, right? Like the create peering connection. I just want to show you that like where I got it from VPC peering connection on the left create peering connection just give name my peering connection okay the zero one right the some name then select a local VPC so this will be a requester I'll just put it in demo one VPC so this will be requested and it is associated with 10 0 0 slash 16 which is our VPC one and this is my account as i said like you can uh, have vpc second vpc in another account you can even have another region so both is possible but uh, steps are almost same but uh, we are just keeping everything in uh, same region and same account so vpc id demo 2 right select another vpc to peer it is demo 2 vpc demo 1 is uh, like a requester demo 2 is acceptor i'll just show you what does that mean when i create peering connection you can see pending acceptance you can accept or reject this peering connection request using action menu you have until some time right like so we that's why i'm saying the vpc requester is demo one and vpc acceptor is demo two so from here we are into same account right so like you can just do it from here itself so i'll accept if it is different account then the acceptor will be in different account you need to log in there go into vpc connections and accept is there but here as it is same we can just accept is uh, accept from here and we are done so we already accepted so with this do we expect that connectivity works see like whatever i was doing before right let let me do it again still the same thing because we haven't have the route created in the route table okay let's do that then i'm just showing you one by one so that you understand when actual connection uh, starts responding right so now i'll just go into route table I'll go into VPC route table and the route table associated with private subnets right I'll just change it so for example this is demo 1 so I'll just add route for this edit inbound route add this so I want to connect this is demo 1 right so I want to connect to demo 2 which is VPC 2 VPC 2 for us is this 192.10.0.0 slash 16 so I'm giving complete VPC range but you can be choosy if you want to uh, give connection or give uh, permission or a route only to subnet uh, one of the subnets you can even do that but I'm just opening it for complete VPC 2 peering connection will by default will come and then save changes so this uh, route is added but just do the same thing for the other route table so demo to private route table okay so you can just see subnet association right this is a with private subnet in vpc2 so vpc2 local is already there so let me add vpc1 route 0.0/16 and it is also going through peering connection okay so this route is there so with this let me just show you whether it works i don't expect it to work but i'll just show you why so now route table is there and you have added route in both the uh, route tables so both subnets know route how to go to other uh, vpc or other network through peering connection but still it does not work because our security group is not accepting ping traffic so for security group to accept ping, ping traffic you need to do something so just first let me just stop it and then 
security group 1 Okay, so SSH is there, but uh, ICMP traffic is not there. For ping to work, you should have ICMP traffic. So you can either just give it to uh, the other uh, VPC or you can just give it to everyone, but I'll just give it to other VPC. 10. Oh, sorry, it is like uh, VPC 1, right? So I went to go uh, give 192.10.0016. Right, so uh, what we are saying is any traffic coming from here, which is ICMP packet, which usually used for ping, you should accept that that is what we are saying here so similarly what we'll do is we'll have the same changes done in this uh, uh, like uh, this one uh, security group as well okay inbound edit inbound and here what we are telling now is uh, accept all the IC, uh, icmp traffic coming from 10.0016 which is our vpc1 so these are the this security group is associated with vpc2 subnets okay so with this everything is done so hopefully connectivity should work now and there you are so this is like what we are doing here is from vpc1 uh, private instance we are able to connect to private instance in vpc2 and that's what peering connection was let's see the vice versa right whether this works so this is in uh, like a vpc2 uh, like, let me just see 19 and then Okay, so this one from VPC1 to VPC2, its connectivity is working. Now we are trying from VPC2 to VPC1. So let me just take VPC1 instance, VPC1 private instance, and let me check whether it works from here. Great, so even this traffic is working. So that's how the peering connection is working fine for us, and, uh, and it's a uh, bi-directional, so either way, right? So we are good with this. Okay, so I hope like you learned something new and uh, I'll en encourage you to try it on your uh, like uh, AWS management console, try it yourself and let me know how it goes. Any questions or any feedback, you like this uh, tutorial, please leave your comments, it means a lot to me. Thank you, thanks a lot. And uh, before we go, right, I want to make sure that if you're following up with me, right, I want to make sure that you are cleaning up your lab. We don't want to pay anything for this lab, right, apart from what is needed. Okay, so let me just terminate these instances first so now we started our cleanup process okay so instances are terminated then i'll go to peering connection and i'll just delete that as well delete peering connection delete uh, related root table entries do not delete i want to delete it okay, so all four instances are terminated so we can just go to vpc and delete the vpc itself delete and this is deleting vpc 2 so we'll just do the exact same thing for vpc 1 delete and it will delete whatever uh, we created right so you can see that all the uh, in, like all, all the infrastructure what we created is getting deleted when we delete the vpc Subnet security group route table everything is clear okay so with this we are done with our lab hope you learned something new today if so please like this video share leave your comments so that i know this content is helping you don't forget to subscribe and that's now okay see you again with yet another exciting tutorial about aws keep learning keep sharing what you learn and thanks for watching